Hey everyone, Sean here from Tesla Family. Welcome if you're new here, and if you're a returning viewer, thanks for checking back with Tesla Family channel again. I recently had my 7.56 kilowatt Tesla solar panel system installed, and now I'm getting ready to check out my first month's production numbers for July 2020. In this video, I'll show you the daily kilowatt hour rule of thumb to check that my system is performing well. I'll show you my production numbers for the entire month of July 2020 and my daily average. And thirdly, I'm going to show you daily production side by side with average cloud cover over my area for the month for each day since I turned on my solar panel system. Ready to check out the numbers? Let's go. may be wondering how can you ensure that your system is working well well Tesla has a little bit of information here on their website if you go to tesla.com forward slash support forward slash energy forward slash solar hyphen panels forward slash own forward slash monitoring you can see this section here this is how can I ensure my system is monitoring well and we're going to do that through the daily kilowatt hour rule of thumb method below it's a pretty simple rule of thumb. All we need to know is the DC system size, which for me is 7.56 kilowatt hours. And we're gonna multiply that by seasonality factor. So there is seasonality factors for summer, fall and spring, and winter. And the seasonality factor is based on the knowledge that the longest day of the year is on June 21st and the shortest day is December 21st. Of course, this is for the Northern Hemisphere. And due to the angle of the sun, solar panel systems will perform differently based on the time of year. So since we are going to be looking at July 2020 numbers, that falls under the summer seasonality category. And for summer, Tesla is saying for May through July, Tesla is saying to use a number of 5 to 7. So our estimated daily kilowatt hour system production equals DC system size multiplied by seasonality factor. So we'll take 7.56 and we'll say on the low end, under perfect conditions, 7.56 times 5, we should be looking at a low daily production of 37.8 kilowatt hours. And on the high side, we could potentially estimate almost 53 kilowatt hours. So this will be helpful information going into looking at our data. So we're going to use our Tesla app here to look at the actual energy production. And it says when we run this test, it says it's best to use a day where the cloud cover percentage, percentage is near zero. Well, I'll show you there were a few days in July where we had near zero, and there were several days where we had a lot of cloud cover. And you're going to see how that impacts our production. So when we analyze the data, if our production is equal to or greater than the estimate, then our system is performing as expected. And if production is less than estimated, we need to look and see whether shading from surrounding trees or other structures or weather was a factor. And if the low performance is consistent from day to day. In winter, performance for some systems may be near zero due to a combination of shading and weather. Here's our first month production data for July 2020. Let's keep in mind here that I didn't turn my system on. I didn't get permission to operate until uh, the first full day would have been July 3rd. So from July 3rd up through July 31st, 1,033 kilowatt hours. That is awesome. That's over one megawatt hour of generation. And that means that I will get one SREC for this production period. And SREC, again, is a Solar Renewable Energy Certificate. And I'll have a future video coming out here, so stay tuned on that, on what we can do with SRECs and how we can sell them. Of those 1,033 kilowatt hours, 38.7% of the energy went to my home and 61% went right to the grid. That works in my favor with net metering, so I can earn a credit. During the entire month, I drew 441 kilowatt hours from the grid and pushed 633 kilowatt hours to the grid. And finally, through the month of July, my home used 841 kilowatt hours. So you can see that my 1033 was more than what was needed for the home. 
Of course, this includes running the air conditioning every day in the month of July and charging my Model 3. Okay, now I want to show you guys my daily system production. And for each day during the month of July 2020, I want to show you the average cloud cover and weather that occurred on that day. So we're going to get the system production information from my Tesla app, but I wanted to give you a little more information on where I'm getting the average cloud cover and weather information. So here I'm on the National Weather Service's webpage uh, for the Baltimore, Washington office, the closest office that serves my area. And uh, I wanted to show you guys that uh, I live generally between the three climate sites here of Washington Dulles, Washington National, and Baltimore Washington International Airports. So I'm actually, what I'm doing is I'm using the climate data for all three of these sites and averaging them together. Which climate data am I using? I'm using this preliminary monthly climate data, the CF6 product for all three of these and going back into the archive for July 2020. The data that I'm looking at here in the preliminary monthly climate data product is column 15 here uh, that shows the percentage of sky cover in tenths. You can see here for the 1st of July at Washington National Airport, the sunrise to sunset average sky cover was 60%. And then here's 30% for the 2nd of July, 20% for the 3rd, and so on. So I'm using this column, column 15, for all three of the climate sites, Washington National, Washington Dulles, and Baltimore Washington International. I'm also looking at this uh, column 16 here showing the weather, and I'll plot that on the PowerPoint slide as well, because weather certainly can play a large factor in your daily production. So here's a spreadsheet that I'm using. Again, I took the average cloud cover for each of the climate sites here. One, two, three. Average them out for each day through the month of July and we're going to be running with this average cloud cover. And again this is between sunrise and sunset. I'm going to show percentage of average cloud cover and percentage of average sunshine along with weather. All right, let's take a look at my daily system production and the average cloud cover and weather since turning on my system here on July 2nd. If you haven't seen the video uh, where I turn my system on, I take you through all the steps of turning my system on as well as I give a tour of the Tesla app and an introduction to net metering. So check that out here in the link above. Before taking a look at the graphics here, I want to draw your attention to the data here on the bottom of each graphic. Here on the left, I have the July 2020 daily average, which is just the monthly total divided by the number of days that I had my system running, 29 days. And on the right here this is the May to July daily kilowatt hour rule of thumb. You can see that we calculated earlier. We're looking for a production number on a clear day between 37.8 and 52.9 kilowatt hours. You can see I turned my system on here on July 2nd right around 5 p.m. and I was able to quickly generate around 1.6 kilowatt hours. You could see for the average cloud cover, a pretty sunny day here, and had I been able to turn the system on much earlier in the day or even the day before, I probably would have seen some really nice production probably in the range of 35 to 40 kilowatt hours. Moving on to July 3rd here, this is the first full day since turning on my system, so we had a really nice production day and we had plenty of sunshine. You could see here only 20% cloud cover through the day. The production curve looks real nice here sort of a slow slow ramp for the first hour of the day from 7 to 8 and then a sharp rise right through the middle of the day and then you can see here in the afternoon evening you see a steady drop uh, there is one sharp dip in here around 4 p.m. that's evident of some of the cloud cover that did move over during the day but our total of 42.4 is above the daily average and right within the kilowatt hour rule of thumb. July 4th, happy Independence Day everyone, happy July 4th. This is the second full day of production of my system. I generated 40.9 kilowatt hours. You can see there was some clouds around here in the morning looking at the production curve. We didn't really have a gradual rise, we just had a sharp jump here right when the clouds broke around 9 a.m. Then we had several periods where clouds were moving over. You could see a few dips into the production curve here during the middle of the day. Looking at the weather here, uh, we did have some thunderstorms move through. You could see a rather sharp drop in the production curve around 5 p.m. Uh, otherwise, a 43% cloud cover for the day.
July 5th, 35.2 kilowatt hours produced. That's the first day where we actually were below the daily average. And there was plenty of periods of clouds moving over my home. 35.2 kilowatt hours produced on the 6th. 39.2 kilowatt hours produced, so we're getting above that daily average again, which is great. There were some additional thunderstorms and fog here on this particular day with 60% cloud cover. But we did still fall in within the rule of thumb, which is great, even with 60% cloud cover. July 7th, more thunderstorms and fog. You can see here that that really impacted my production. This is the first day where I had production below even 30 kilowatt hours, so only 24.8 kilowatt hours. 77% cloud cover, so that really impacted my production really through the day. In fact, I barely was able to reach uh, about 5.8 kilowatt hours for just a short period. July 8th, a pretty decent production day here, 39.8. Uh, no weather around, but 33% uh, cloud cover during the day. You can see those clouds moved over. Uh, hit and miss periods uh, through the middle of the day. Uh, why does this curve look sort of reduced compared to the other ones? Well, on this particular day, um, I did do some charging of my Model 3. So I'm going to just show you how that looks here in the Tesla app. I'm not going to show it for every day, but just for this one particular day, you can see uh, that I did uh, charge my car here after 8 p.m. Um, and so what happens is that sort of skews the y-axis. July 9th, 38.9 kilowatt hours. No weather on this particular day, 37% cloud cover. Um, so just enough there to cause some notches in the production curve throughout the day. But we're above the daily average. July 10th, had some uh, morning fog around the area here. You can see that that was a rather slow start to the production day. Um, really the first half of the day before noon, we really didn't get anywhere above around three kilowatts of production. And then the clouds broke here in the afternoon for a short period before some more clouds came in. Uh, so 60% cloud cover on the day, 31 kilowatt hours produced. July 11, 33.3 kilowatt hours produced, 67% cloud cover. So you can see that there were several periods of the overcast skies here through the morning that really cut into the production curve. July 12th, 27.4 kilowatt hours produced here. You can see 50% cloud cover throughout the daylight hour. And looking here at the production curve, mainly cleared a few clouds around for the first half of the day till noon, one o'clock. And then right after that, we had some heavy cloud cover come in right through the second half of the day, which impacted our daily production. Probably could have had somewhere in the 30s or maybe even around 40 on this particular day if we didn't have the clouds come in. July 13th, 41.3 kilowatt hours. There was 53% cloud cover, some morning fog. So you can see here that a uh, pretty slow ramp to the day, uh, at least through 9 a.m. And then we had that sharp rise right up to the peak here, right around 1 p.m. And then we did have a few periods of cloud cover drifting by in the afternoon, cutting into production. But still ended up with 41.3 kilowatt hours. Tuesday the 14th, look at that production curve. That's almost perfect. Uh, despite having 37% cloud cover, we generated 45.3 kilowatt hours. This particular date was my highest production day in the month. And if you compare it to the daily kilowatt hour rule of thumb, it fits right in the middle of that range. And we're about 10 kilowatt hours above the daily average. July 15th, another pretty decent production day, 40.4 kilowatt hours. No weather to speak of, but there was 47% cloud cover. You could see through the middle of the day, there were some periods of partly to mostly cloudy skies cutting into the production curve. July 16th, 29.3 kilowatt hours. No weather, but look at that 77% cloud cover on the day. Very cloudy here to start the, you know, through the morning hours. And then as the clouds broke in the afternoon, we had some decent production, but there was still cloud cover around as we don't have a really smooth back end of the production curve. July 17th, 41.6 kilowatt hours. Overall, a nice looking production curve. Um, even despite having 73% cloud cover on the day, uh, the clouds uh, were likely rather thin here and they didn't really cut too deep into the production curve. On the 18th here, another really nice looking production curve. Look how generally smooth that is. That's what we like to see. Only 33% cloud cover here this particular day. No weather to speak of. Uh, just a few little notches in the curve where there are probably a few periods of some scattered cloud cover moving by.
July 19th, 35.6 kilowatt hours, 40% cloud cover on the day. Uh, so you can see that that cloud cover mainly came in here in the afternoon hours where there was several sharp dips in the production curve. July 20th, uh, here's another one of those stunted looking production arches and that's again because I uh, did charge the car on this particular day. I'm not going to show you that screen but just keep in mind that that's why the production curve is stunted a little bit. 70% cloud cover with some thunderstorms in the area. And you can see that those came in right around 5 o'clock for a brief period. July 21st. Pretty decent looking production curve. 38 kilowatt hours here. We did have some thunderstorms and fog. The fog likely causing a little bit of a delayed rise here in the morning. And then the thunderstorms, a sharp drop around 4 p.m. in the afternoon. July 22nd, 25.3 kilowatt hours. 77% cloud cover this particular day, I remember. Uh, there were some thunderstorms and fog around, so that impacted the curve here in the morning hours. Uh, during the middle of the day, actually had some pretty decent production for around four hours, and then the thunderstorms came in right around 3.30 or 4 p.m., and that shut down production for the last four hours of the day, 25.3 kilowatt hours. July 23rd, 34.1 kilowatt hours, some thunderstorms and fog again, uh, impacting generally the morning and afternoon hours here otherwise the middle of the day some decent production 80 percent cloud cover july 24th 24.5 kilowatt hours 87 percent cloud cover uh, mostly cloudy day here you can see that that really did cut into our production curve and uh, maybe it was only about an hour here uh, in the one to two o'clock hour period where we had maybe near peak production on the 25th 28.2 kilowatt hours some fog here in the morning leading to a slow rise here in the production curve and some scattered to numerous clouds here moving through, generally through a good chunk of the day, impacting our production. And on the 26th here, no weather to speak of and 40% cloud cover, another really smooth looking production curve here. Uh, maybe only between noon and about 3 p.m. there was likely just a few to a scattered cloud cover that really caused an interesting little peaks there on top of the peak of the production curve. Otherwise, hey, I'm very happy with 42.9. On the 27th, happy with this here, 40.8, and we didn't have any weather, but it looks like we had the cloud cover coming in, uh, mainly here after 4 p.m. On the 28th, another stunted production curve, but overall 38 kilowatt hours, no weather to speak of, but 53% cloud cover. All right here, July 29th, this might be the winner for the smoothest curve during the month. Not the highest production, but probably a close second here at 44.5 kilowatt hours. Only 23% cloud cover. There was a little bit of fog, and you can see that that did impact the first hour here earlier in the morning. And if we didn't have that fog in the area, this likely could have been the highest production day of the month. July 30th, there were some thunderstorms and fog here. You can see that that really ate into the later afternoon hours of my production curve. So 36.1 kilowatt hours produced during the day. Let's see, after some morning fog, there was some nice production from around 8 o'clock till around 2 or 3 o'clock, and then some thunderstorms came in, 70% cloud cover on the day. And for our last day of the month, July 31st, this was the lowest production day of the month here. Only 12.5 kilowatt hours. I remember this day, it was cloudy nearly all day long. Look at 97% cloud cover. And when I say cloudy, I mean generally overcast most of the day. I'm actually surprised we were able to, to collect any solar energy, but that goes to show you that you can still generate solar even on a cloudy day. You're just not going to have daily kilowatt hour rule of thumb. All right, guys, thanks for watching the video. If you really enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe to Tesla Family Channel here on YouTube. We really appreciate all of our subscribers and everyone who watches our videos. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you soon. Check out all of our other videos as well. Also, follow us on Twitter at Tesla Family Chan. Use my referral code to buy a new Tesla and you will get 1,000 free supercharging miles. Or if you use my referral code to buy Tesla solar roof or solar panels, you'll get a $100 reward after system activation.